for uh, another leather craft live here working through uh, working through some inventory projects this evening in the shop uh, so working on on a little pad folio here uh, actually had a couple fronts going on this one here I was kind of excited we did instead of a, a geometric through these pieces here went ahead and did kind of a decorative cut um, which really happy with how that turned out this one here I got a little tiny basket stamp we're going to use on but I got uh, a little bit of tooling to, to finish up here so we're gonna jump right into it Ashley good evening glad to see you on here or uh man I was thinking about you today where I have those belt templates and I got here in the next couple days to try to get some things inventoried um, and get those up available. If you guys haven't seen seen those yet, they are uh, they are awesome little templates. Backyard leather, good to see you on here. Oops, I forgot one other one other tool I'm gonna hit in here. I'm gonna throw this little little seed right there in that pod now. I'll get behind here with my mule's foot. I like using a single mule's foot as opposed to one of those ones that has all of them, you know, like four of them put together. Um, I just like that flexibility of being able to follow the, um, the curvature of my stem. Um, and I can do that a lot easier uh, if I'm running my own curve as opposed to one of those that, that already has it built in. They have, they have uh, those mules foot where there's like four or five in a row and curve left, curve right, four of them straight. But if my curve that I want's a little different than that one, or if I wanna throw a few more in there, I like to have that freedom in there. Charles, good evening. Appreciate you being on here as well. Uh, jump over grab this veiner here I'm gonna use it right on the outside of this flower stem help touch that off a bit and then I'm also gonna take that and we're gonna bounce out here to these two big swirls uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you even something else new on these swirls that I haven't haven't done uh, you you very rarely see me use a tool that is smooth and not uh, checkered or lined and I'm gonna show you what a how I do something with a smooth tool here in just a minute this is not the smooth tool obviously Kind of rotating that veiner around as we go. Hello, hello, David from Texas. How are you? Hello, Jake. Calvin. Yes, happy Labor Day. Is anybody else uh, celebrating Labor Day by laboring? It's kind of a odd thing. I know a lot of people don't do that these days, but I still enjoy it. Uh, gosh, are you ready for the Meet the Maker show? Man, we are getting there. We're going to do final... Uh, shop prep here actually starting starting this evening as soon as I get done on here uh, Eric and I are gonna be packing some stuff into the shop to, to start getting some things ready uh, Connie you had to work today right on Charles get a close-up of your Vayner placement yes I will um, we'll work around this next one here I'll get right up by it Fade that around there. I uh, worked on a tote bag and coasters today. Definitely laboring on Labor Day. Just right. Finishing with my wife after making some hats. Greetings from England. Hello, Albert. Yeah, Ashley, I saw those uh, hats that you got going. That those are looking awesome. I'm excited for you to get that uh, get that stitching all dialed in and be ready to take some wholesale orders. I think uh, I think we need some 23 plus hats going. It'd be great. I don't know if you're actually planning on doing custom orders, but just throwing that out there. 
I'm okay. David, hello. All right, hopefully, hopefully we can see that there. I'm trying to get the, oops, oops. Trying to get the close up there for you, Charles, but kind of a combination of a close up, but trying not to shadow it too bad here. Oops, too close, I'm hitting the camera, there we go. You see, as I'm going around here, I'm watching my spacing between each one. And then I'm rotating that tool. As I do that, what I'm looking for is to see where the actual imprint is pointing to. So if we look at this whole space filler, this big swirl coming around here, where's the center of that? Kind of right in here-ish, right? Look for more of the center of that. And when I am rotating these, they're pointing towards that center. So as I rotate around here, I'm gonna keep rotating that tool to keep that imprint facing towards there, kind of reaching towards there. That's just one of those small things that's gonna help with flow. And I'm gonna really lighten up as we're coming under that border. I see a couple comments rolling in and I will get to those here in just a second. I see them rolling in, I just can't read them because I'm really trying hard to look over top of this camera because I got things pretty close right here. That vayner, I always keep tipped. I never lay that down and get a full tool impression there. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide, whoops, whoops, tighten that up. Pick this back up just a shade here. There we go, and get around there. All right, I have this one year tooling sitting right here on the table next to me. I use it for an order book. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, so this uh, this original pattern here, uh, Connie brings up a great point. This is this pattern is available in the uh, Leather Life classroom. This is one of the, I, I don't even remember what month. I would have to, somebody would have to refresh me. I'd have to go back and look. But one month we did this whole thing as a uh, project and I walk you through step by step on tooling it. Um, you get the pattern to download, and then also on the construction of it. It's a small uh, notepad cover. Eric, could you mind hand me that one right there? That finished one. Yeah, thank you, sir. So this is one finished out where I did a larger basket stamp in there. This is the one we actually built during that uh, class, and it opens up. It's got the notepad that slides in there card holder, pocket for the for loose papers, and then the closure with the pen there. So it's kind of a kind of a neat little neat little project. Um, but I'm doing up a few of these for inventory in the shop and doing them a little bit different. Um, Eric's been in here working with me on some tooling stuff, so that's a great pattern to kind of work on some stuff with. And and then I'm just kind of finishing up some stuff on here and like I said this one we did did some decorative cut work this one I got a little tiny basket we're gonna run and just gonna make some things uh, look a little bit different there all right flower center here we're gonna put this in a few different steps um, I start by just hitting that one down Joe Gray from Westchester, Pennsylvania. All right, joining in from a ways away there. Okay, once I hit that center down, now I'm gonna take this center liner, which it looks, it's kind of like a vertical line thumbprint, but it's got the concave in there to fit around. I'm tipping this back. Anytime I'm tipping a tool, all that's doing is softening an edge, what I kind of call softening that back edge of that instead of getting your full tool impression. So this, like many of the tools, is one that I work with it tipped one way or another. We're just going around each of these petals, putting a little shading 
inside those pedals around that center. Help bring that center to life a little bit. Now I'm gonna go back to my bevel. And this is a XX steep checkered bevel here. I'm gonna really bury that in on those pedals right down next to that center. grab the right bevel that I want to grab though. I grabbed the wrong one there. There we go. Now I got my XX steep checkered bevel. When I come in next to that center, I'm careful not to run all the way into those seeds or anything. So that's ran in there. Now I'm going to go back to that center tool again. Now, if you're doing using one with seeds around here like this, you got to be careful when you do it. Get it, make sure those seeds are lined up so you don't smash them down, because that'll aggravate you if you do that. And we're just going to reset that in there. Okay, Alvin. All right, we'll catch you next time. Enjoy the family time. There we go. Look at that, just kind of really, really sharpens that center up a lot. Okay, next thing, I'm gonna go go to work with my round bevels here. Now this, this is gonna be something where I'm using these as a lifter. And just kind of help them to add a little extra definition in here. While we're here on this swirl, I'll show you where I talked about using a smooth tool or I don't typically use a smooth tool. Check this one out. I'm gonna grab this smooth parashader. I think this may be the only smooth tool in my block right now, but it's just a little kind of a medium size parashader. And I'm not even grabbing my maul here. I'm gonna use this one by hand. And I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of a shading right on this inside. As I do that, you know how a lot of times when I'm shading the outside, I look for a uh, look for that highlighted ridge like right here where we run that shading. Looking on the inside of that right here, watching that inside line being real consistent with that. Rolling this around here and then I lighten up my pressure and fade out. I'm gonna go back again, kind of soften that line there. Just throws a little extra definition in there and then we come back with our decorative cuts here in a little bit. Um, just really helps touch that off. So I'm going to do that over here, too. On that, out on that tip, and then we'll come back in here. Again, I kind of have this tipped a little bit to soften that edge, again, like we're talking. There we go, roll that around. Just gives a gives a little little extra something to it. Okay, seen some uh, oops, oops, trying to Okay, can you also do that with the thumbprint? Um, oh, Paul, thank you. <laughs> you. You clarified it for me. 
Um, the yes, the, around the flower center there, you can use that. Do that with your thumbprint. Um, it's essentially the same tool, really. I mean, I'm sure Barry King wouldn't like me saying this, but that's pretty much the same tool. Other than this one gets narrower at one end, that thumbprint will get a little bit narrower, as opposed to your center liner stays the same width. But the big difference is down here. See how this one is concave to fit around that flower center where these are going to be round at either end. So when you're working that around, it just takes a lot more. You got to be a lot more careful when you're using the thumbprint versus the center liner, but you sure can do that. Um, I've done it quite a bit before, so... Uh, yeah, with the smooth shader there, um, you get that, you get the burnish, but I, I'm also actually pushing down with that too, just where you get a little definition going in there. Um, and then once we, we come over that with, with the decorative cuts, it just, again, just adds a little bit to it, that burnish effect, like looking at this one, you can see that light moving where you see the actual, um, oh, I don't know, the definition in there, if you will. Um, okay, so the round bevels here, let's see, I think, what round bevels are, there, are using? So these are the checkered round bevels from Barry King. Um, this is, we had this debate on size the other day, and I'm, I, I forgot to go check my catalog just to double check, but this uh, this is a, a larger one. I think this is the largest round bevel he offers. It fits really good in in this particular pattern here on a lot of these curves. Um, and then there's a smaller, you can see I just went to do that. That one's a, that's a little tight a curve. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna wait and grab my small one for in here. But it just helps again kind of kind of lift and touch off that pattern just a little bit it's a small difference but i think it i think it's worth it to just come retouch those curves Yeah, the largest round bevel is a four. I, yeah, I'm pretty darn sure this is a four. Pretty darn sure, but I've been wrong before, so it could have happened again. Okay, now I'm switching to my smaller one. Um, I'm not positive on which size this one is, so. But I think, I would think it's a one or a two. touched off there looking pretty good now it looks like we're getting down to uh, some decorative cuts and backgrounds I'm gonna go ahead and touch this with just a light a light little bit of water here You can see, waiting, waiting for that water to kind of soak in there. Make sure getting getting that uh, penetration from that water in there. You can see where we have that shading in there. It's not, it doesn't penetrate as fast. Where you have that that burnished down, compressed the fibers of that leather. It doesn't uh, soak in quite as quick there. Just kind of a interesting point as we're looking at that. But I think we're good to go with some decorative cuts here. I'm gonna start right here on the flower. Remember always getting 
a little bit of curve with those cuts. And starting deep, fading off to light. Big thing about your decorative cuts in the flower center or in the flowers is that you're always pulling down towards your centers. So even here where I put kind of that little jagged cut in there, this first one I'm starting deep, just one solid curve. And then these fan off, but that one where it even has that little curve to it. Where that fades out, it fades down towards the center. It's pulling towards the center. Let's see, could you show the round bevel? Yep, there, there is, is the large round bevel, this, this edge here, rather than being straight across, is rounded there. And then my smaller one is right there. That shows that round edge. Not focusing very good to show the checkering, but at least you can see how that's rounded there. Start working through some other decorative cuts in this vine work here. Now, like I always say with these decorative cuts, there's no real right or wrong. Um, well, I say that, but I've, I mean, I've definitely done some cuts that look very much so wrong before. But as long as you follow some of those fundamentals, starting deep, fading off to light, and wherever you're putting them you're going trying to go with your flow you're trying to add flow to your pattern and not take it away you know you don't want cuts that are straight and you don't want them that look like they're going to intersect each other um, you don't want them running crossways across vines or across your flower petals you know just pulling from one side to the other, pulling down. We talked about pulling down towards the center there. Okay, now I'll get, get in these swirls, start getting... shadow that we pressed in there earlier on that bigger cut. Come down here as well, get stack a few cuts on that outside. Hold down here just looking for nice smooth Even cuts, fade out there. Okay. Getting down to just a couple little vines here. Time for backgrounds. So for backgrounds on this, I'm gonna grab my bar grounder. This one here, this is my, let's see, 
seven seed. Number 30 is the size on it, but. Try to kind of fan those through there, keep the distance same. I'm gonna sharpen up my bevel here on the edge where I brush those seeds. Just clean that up slightly. And we'll keep working our way through through this pattern here. Now like in this space, you can see that's not quite enough to reach across there. I don't want to leave that little gap. So I'm going to come back. Just stair step those out. We pick up that outside edge there. Crisp that up just a little bit in a couple spots. There we go. There you can see where I fan that across there. Um, you know, you can get really detailed with your uh, bar grounders and spend lots and lots of time and sizing down each each size and working your way through. Um, I'm probably not as careful with my bar grounders as some people are, but I think just being consistent with them, either keeping them going the same direction or being able to fan them out consistently, like in this particular spot, is going to make that look, um, look a little nicer. Kelly says, oh, no, I'm late. What did I miss? Oh, we gave away so much free stuff. Just, just a minute too late. No, I'm joking. We're just working through this pattern here, kind of touching off some details. We're getting down, getting down towards the end of it. I'm actually just working on some inventory stuff for Roundup. Yeah, Kelly's laughing. You don't believe me. Um, we're... Uh, And doing this background here's the other the other one that that we've already done did some decorative cut work in there this one's going to get a little bit of basket stamp going to be a smaller basket stamp than the one that we did in the classroom the classroom one we used a larger basket stamp or i did on mine um, this one's going to get a little itty bitty tiny one uh your bar grounder never comes out that dark what am i doing wrong um either it's going to be one of two things connie either uh either your leather is too dry um like way way too dry or more than likely it's too dry i doubt you're ah, you could be going too wet but um basically your moisture content isn't right or you're not hitting um you're not hitting your tool near hard enough which it's most likely that you're not hitting your tool hard enough but um but yeah be one of one of those two things for sure because i know you have uh barry king bar grounders so um the tools tools the same we just need to um I probably just need to hit it just a touch harder
we're gonna get to get to the basket stamping portion of this one tonight um, but at least get all these all these detail tools Kelly haven't tried a bar grounder yet well um, yeah if, if you haven't had a reason to like slam your hand in the door then try bar grounder out because it'll make you want to do that just for fun um, the first time so I say that in the most encouraging way possible of don't get frustrated when you first start with your bar grounder because anybody who's ran a bar grounder has been through those frustrations before as well so there's the other options that you have too this is these are kind of cool little tools see how detailed it'll show here or not those are that's called a pebble backgrounder um, a large and a small one and I'm going to show you what that looks like out here out on this edge. And don't panic that I'm doing this on my good piece. This is actually gets covered up with the spine here. But see that? It's kind of a, just shows a irregular pattern in there. But kind of a neat, neat little background option there as well. So awesome. Thanks, Eric. Now I'm going to have to go tool shopping. Those are actually Eric's tools they hand me over. Those are pretty dang cool. Um, I'm going I'm to have to start getting my Berry King list added, too, again here, too. Man, you guys are... We're going we're gonna to keep him in business, that's for sure. Thank you. I'm getting just about whipped with it here. Okay. I'm looking on time there. Five or six, okay. All right. So we got our bar ground and done. I'm gonna nothing better than some berry tools or clay tools. <laughs> Judson, thanks, man. Uh, one thing I didn't do there that I am going to do is out here in these little crevices. I'm gonna just barely touch that bar grounder in there. got your cross all drawn out ready to put it in leather good deal um albert yeah you don't want to overlap that bar ground tool um the idea you know you want them kind of lined up there that bar grounder's got you know the individual seeds in it so you want those just lined up nice and if you start overlapping it it can get matted down pretty bad um here here in this these little crevices I'm just kind of popping up that corner there just to help help add a little a little extra definition off these corners but uh, yeah no you don't want to overlap those I wouldn't say it's necessarily the same with all background tools at least not when I run them some when I run a matte background it gets overlapped a little bit um, but yeah there's there's a lot to those backgrounds when you start really diving in on the different tools. Um, I'm not gonna run my full basket stamp, but I will show you, seeing that we've been talking about it, I'll show you how I'm gonna set that up and be ready to run that here probably in the morning. But I'm gonna grab a straight edge, and when I start this, I'm gonna, I need to just pick a spot. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's no right or wrong. I could run them straight across here if I wanted to but I want to run them at an angle. So I'm going to, I'm just looking here. I'm going to base this off of this corner here. 
and this inside corner here. Actually, we'll go outside to outside, make it easy here. This outside corner, this outside corner, and I'm gonna run a line. I'm gonna switch this around, run this outside corner and this outside corner. I'm just lining up just to get lines that are even on both sides of this pattern. And that's just setting our angle with those lines. Now with those set, we'll be able to take our basket stamp, which I'm taking like this tiny itty bitty, itty bitty little tiny basket stamp here. Um, and we start on one side of the line and then I jump to the other side, put those little feet in each other. I, I run that all the way down where that tool overlaps. We'll work our way all the way up the line, going each side there. Yeah, Kelly, you got this one by accident. It's, a, it's an awesome little tool. Um, it's definitely time consuming. You go to filling up much of a big space, but it's pretty darn awesome. But we'll work our way all the way up. Once we get up that line, then we can come back and actually rotate this. So I'm always looking where I'm looking right up the line. Run, get close to a border, tip that tool up so I just catch the bottom of it and don't actually crash into my border. But now I turn sideways and you're able to match that basket right up there. right down your line again. Again, I tip that when I'm up close to the border there. So anyhow, that's just my short little basket stamp tutorial. Um, once I go through all that, then we'll come back with the border stamp around there. But anyhow, like I said, I'm uh, not going to actually run that whole thing out tonight. Um, just going to keep this one a little shorter here i'm gonna double check see if i missed any questions there um doug what am i making so this uh this these are front covers here to uh, a little pad folio let me let me raise this up so i can actually see something a little bit here this uh this little pad folio project this is this is one that we did um, we did in the Leather Life classroom and it just has the little notebook that slips in there. This is a, a small pad folio. Um, call this the on the go pad folio. It's got the little pin closure there. Um, you know, kind of a, kind of a neat decorative little project there with the, with the scalloped on there. But, um, anyhow, I'm doing up a couple of these for inventory in the, in the shop here. And so we're doing, doing some different things out, uh, out in this area where I put that larger basket stamp on the class project one, but uh, doing a couple different things there and, and touching those off and, and working, working through these projects. But we got the Pendleton Roundup coming up fast, uh, super, super fast. The kickoff parade is actually on Saturday. So um, we will be ready to go there. Doug, how much am I charging for them? Um, it, it depends on what I wind up doing die work wise and um, also time wise, whether I wind up, not the back of this piece, but the, the back cover, what I wind up doing carving wise on there because I just haven't, haven't quite decided yet. We're just laying these out and getting some stuff rolling. Um, so it's, 
it's hard to say exactly what what they wind up um, at by the time I get done here, but um, that that just depends on how busy the week gets actually. <laughs> so um, general range on these you're gonna be, um, gosh, by the time we get done we'll be probably probably in that uh, you know with the partial carve ones we're gonna be in that you know 225 to 325 range um, again depending on depending on what we we'll wind up doing on the back side how much carving we go there could go could go a little bit a um, little bit more there's one that I'm going to do we're going to do a pretty intricate pattern and do full carve front and back um, that one's going to get up there a ways um, as well and we're going to do a little different stuff on the interior of that one so um, there's there's ways that you can you can add to this this base pattern um, that we did in the classroom there's there's things that we do again jazz up your interiors and stuff a lot to really up that that price point value um, which is what what will wind up doing on these inventory ones we won't stick with with just quite the base um, the base model there we'll up those a little bit to uh, hopefully kind of be on brand for what we got going on in here right now but uh, anyhow that's yeah the pricing thing there's there's lots of different lots of different directions you go and and that conversation can go a whole lot deeper like we've done in the um the business builders episodes before too uh, and somebody asked about a ruler this uh this ruler here it's called an omnigrid and they're awesome um they come in you know different widths different lengths um you know this one started at 18 inches and then i broke it somehow so this just goes in my little small case that goes back and forth uh to the home shop in here with me but uh, i got a larger one that i keep all the time that's the full oh thanks yeah that's the full 18 inches and i love this thing works so good um yeah you find you can pick these up most craft stores things where you get um, um like fabric and things i think that's where they're probably actually designed for is more your sewing type of crafts but they work amazing appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight uh and hope you enjoy the rest of your labor day evening we will